What's up, guys? Welcome back to Full Stop Reviews, your one-stop shop for all things movie. I'm your host, Matt, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what I've been doing for the last few months with these videos. So I typically like to cover new-ish films, maybe maybe stuff that's been recently released. This time, I decided to do something a little bit fun for the month of July. So as a lover of film, and if you're watching this, there's a good chance you are too, unless you just hate watch these videos and want to punch me. You may or may not know that the Criterion channel does a half-off sale through their partner at Barnes & Nobles every year in July. I thought it'd be fun to review a few movies from the collection this month. And so I'm going to be talking about a couple of different movies, movies that I personally love from this collection. I'm going to try and talk about a different movie from a different country each time, because one of the joys with the Criterion movies is that you get to discover films from all over the world, basically from the dawn of film to now. It's a very diverse collection and very much worth checking out, even if you're only tangentially interested in film. So without further ado, Matt, what are we talking about today? Well, I'm glad you asked, Matt. Today, we will be talking about the 1963 World War II all-time classic John Sturgis, Steve McQueen movie, The Great Escape. Oh, wait, look at that cover art. It's fantastic, isn't it? I swear to God, I'm not being <laughs> sponsored by Criterion. Unless they want to give me money. Please. So this movie boasts one of the most impressive ensemble casts ever put to screen. I mean, I mean, for God's sake, just listen to this. Donald Pleasance, Charles Bronson, Steve McQueen, Richard Attenborough, James Coburn, James Garner. It, it just, it goes on and on and on and on. And all of these people are in top form. And one of my favorite aspects about this movie, before I even talk about the movie itself, is the way, like, the kind of story that this is. Because 40, this movie was based off the 1944 Allied POW escape from Stalag Luft III, which was a Luftwaffe prisoner of war camp. Despite the fact that 76 men escaped from the prison, all but three of them re were caught, and about 40 of them were executed for their part in the escape. And so this is not a happy story. I mean, most World War II movies aren't, but you'd think with all the pomp around this film and all the masculine badassery of this film, it would be a little bit more of an easy sell. This kind of um, duality, of tonal duality, I guess, in terms of telling a story like this and presenting it the way it is, is why it almost never got made to begin with, because when the movie was first pitched to Samuel Goldwyn... Goldwyn criticized the idea, saying, what the hell kind of escape is this? Nobody gets away. And that's, that, that was a very good point. It, it would seen as a very bleak moment in the Allied history. And why make a movie celebrating that? And so this movie had a hard time even getting greenlit for a few years now. Another fascinating aspect about this movie is that of the men that I just listed, almost all of them actually served in World War II. Even Hans Wessemer, I'm sorry if I butchered that pronunciation, the German actor who played the commandant of the POW camp, he served as an infantry soldier on the Eastern Front and was actually captured by the Soviets. Donald Pleasance, who uh, we'll actually be talking about in a later movie review series later on down towards the fall, you probably know what I'm referring to. Donald Pleasance was a Royal Air Force officer. He, he actually got shot down and he actually did time in a Luftwaffe POW camp. So a, a lot of these people were RAF, USAF, U.S. Marines. They, there's a certain experience from that that they bring to the that they uh, that they bring to the screen. Just an attention to detail. There's there's a certain humanity to the way that they play these characters, because for the most part they're they're not just telling the stories of the men in this camp. They're telling their own stories as well on both sides of the conflict. And I think that is infinitely fascinating. You'll find this kind of phenomenon pervasive through World War II movies that were made at this time. It's just an interesting dynamic because you have so many actors. I mean, even actors who aren't in this movie. Jimmy Stewart fought in World War II. John Wayne did at one point. I mean, it's like almost an entire generation of people. And so there's a certain lived experience that they're all bringing. Now, as for the movie itself, the movie runs for almost three hours, but you never feel its length. It is worth every minute to watch. John Sturgis his direction never leaves you bored. And one of the criticisms that this movie does get is that it's kind of tonally imbalanced. Like I said, it's kind of a, not a happy-go-lucky, but a certainly an optimistic, a more optimistic than not movie about a group of men who essentially fail and 
all get killed in the process. And so there's a certain spirit of optimism that goes throughout this movie that in the face of all this, that they have the strength and the will to persevere. And that's kind of the way I've always interpreted the tone. I don't know how other people see it, but that's kind of the, the, the will to fight on is the way I've always read it with this movie. The music is great. The stunts are great. Steve McQueen has one of the most recognizable stunts in any movie ever with his motorcycle escape. Fun fact, he actually did most of the driving himself with the exception of that final jump. That was his stunt double. But he was actually a uh, motorcycle driver professionally for a while before going into acting. And he was kind of forced into committing just to acting by the studio. And so he made sure that in his contract to do this movie, he got a motorcycle scene and this is what we got. Now this movie isn't exactly the most historically accurate World War II movie in the world. For example, it definitely plays up the involvement of American POWs in this escape, which was mostly dominated by uh, Polish, British, and Norwegian POWs. And I mean, it's an American production. You're gonna you're gonna see that in a lot of American war movies, but it doesn't. The movie tries not to diminish the role of any one person because it has such a it's such a big cast, and they all get really really great character arcs. The movie is sad. It's hopeful. It's there's there's a mournfulness to it, but it's so endearing. And some of the characters are just so fucking cool that it's just kind of awesome that you get to spend time with these guys, even in conditions like this. And so the music's great, the stunts are great, the the, the fucking cinematography is gorgeous. You know, I'm a sucker for landscape porn. There's a lot of it here. Just the real camaraderie that in friendship that develops between all of the characters on screen is so, so rewarding to see as it pays off and heartbreaking to see as it gets cut off. And, I mean, if you haven't figured out that I'm going to give this thing a green light by now, you might as well just stop watching these videos altogether. <laughs> yeah, green light, drum roll. Have you guys seen this movie? What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? If you hated it, why? What other movies from the Criterion Collection would you like to see me cover? I already have my set lineup for this month, but if you ever want me to go back to this collection and talk about a movie, what would you like to see me cover? What are some of your guys' favorite Criterion movies? What are some of your favorite World War II movies? There's a, there's a bajillion of them out there. Thanks for watching with me to the end on this one, guys. We have a lot more on this channel coming up for you. More first-timers, more, more Too Fast Too Movie, more Return of the Movie, and more Full Stop. I'm going to be talking about Criterion pretty much for the rest of this month as well as a uh, few more contemporary films, so don't worry, Black Widow fans, I got you. Thanks for watching, and hey, it's full stop.